Do you ever have one of those ideas that you know is just fantastic and you can't wait to execute it? I had one of those ideas and I was super excited to get started on it. Then I walked through my kitchen and I saw a can of beans. And then I decided I would work on that instead. As you can see, these are the English beans. I have to buy them imported, especially for me at the grocery store where they stock imported items. I really like these beans. Anyways, uh, I thought, why not make a radio control can of beans? So let's, let's get started on that. Why not? If you think I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel with this, um, you should probably change the channel because this is actually like an idea I'm really excited about. Here's a cheap remote control car. We're gonna stuff it into that can of beans. I would have liked to have found one at a thrift store, but unfortunately it's difficult to find a remote control car and the controller together. This was $10 and I was just too excited and I needed something. So we're gonna go with this $10 Corvette. Oh, that is so much more of an elegant solution than zip ties. These little things that you twist on the bottom and it releases it. Oh, who invented that? Thank you. Thank you for inventing these things instead of zip ties. I love you. Before we open up this bad boy, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't put a camera on it and chase my cats around. Well, it wasn't that fun. Let's take this bad boy apart. So like most remote control cars, they're a separate sort of gearbox rear axle assembly. Um, and actually this one is on a slight pivot, which I don't know if that's just poor design or on purpose. We're gonna need to trim this down a bit to get it to fit inside the can. All right, here's our control circuit. And this is actually a nice little drive unit and should work pretty well. Here's a can of beans that I've removed the bottom from. I wanted to keep the pop tab because I think it looks cool. I think we're gonna need to first pop these off. Little plastic tabs. Huh. There. This fits nicely inside the can. We need to figure out how we can fit this circuit board inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do what I should have done initially, which is to remove the batteries. This is the battery compartment, which we're probably not gonna be able to use just because it's bulky. And that lifts right off. So here's our chassis. It's a little big to fit, maybe? With all of this combined, I'm doubtful. But maybe. If we can keep this together without... The less work I have to do. Journey of a thousand steps begins with a initial snapping of plastic. You know what? Where's my etiquette? I should be wearing safety glasses. I have safety glasses, I just don't know where they are, so we're gonna go with the cooler option. This now could potentially fit into this can of beans. If I keep this intact, that would be just great. Let's see how it fits with the gearbox, though. That's a bit too tight. All right, looks like we're gonna be desoldering the battery case. The way that a battery box works is that you have one contact, on one side, this is the negative contact. It attaches to the negative side of the battery and then the positive side goes here. The positive is linked to the next negative. These two are just connected to each other, which then goes to the next positive, which then is then linked to the next negative. These two are connected, which then exits through the positive right here. Running batteries this way is called running them in series and you actually add the voltages. So if each battery is about 1.5 volts, you end up with 4.5 volts. We might be able to get away with running this on one lithium cell. One of the problems I think we're gonna have is with keeping the proper weight distribution. If the weight is evenly balanced, then it won't stop on its own. When you put some weight in the bottom, it'll actually stop. This switch is just massive. So this is a two-position switch. The switch has a common contact in the middle. The switch is always in contact with that middle contact and it either connects it to this outer contact or that outer contact, depending on which side. One of the sides is on and one of the sides is off. If I remove these two outer points, which are just anchors, I can bend the switch backwards and it'll still function. The switch is 
switch will now no longer get in the way if we mount it to the top of the gearbox like this. Take the lob of that stuff. Let's figure out how the battery is going to fit before we get too far. Pull up the battery bin. These are 18650 cells. These were taken out of laptop batteries that I found online on clearance sales. These cells can start on fire or explode, so you should be very, very careful and don't handle them unless you know what you're doing. 3.9, let me find one. There we go, 4 point, almost 2, that'll do. Soldering to lithium batteries is not the best way to make a connection, and there are some risks involved, you know, like blowing up and such. It's better to do spot welding. Heat decreases a battery's useful life. So when you solder, you want to be very quick because you don't want to build up too much heat. I'd just like to take a moment to mention, if you've ever used lead-free solder, you'll know that it's absolutely terrible. But not this solder. This solder is the only solder that I use because it works just as well as leaded solder, but it's lead-free. I remember switching over to lead-free solder and hating it, absolutely hating it, until I tried this. It's fantastic stuff. You will not regret using it. This is SparkFun lead-free solder. Check out sparkfun.com. Finish the soldering. I also added some hot glue to the ends of the contacts so that they're insulated just in case this battery gets loose inside this metal container. If I mount the battery like this, we concentrate the center of gravity right here. And that might actually work. Make sure we fit. Oh, and that's beautiful. We're gonna wrap the antenna and tack it down with a little bit of glue. Let's make sure it still works. We have some issues, I think in range. Well, we have absolutely no range, but let's see if it drives. But I have absolutely terrible radio signal, which is maybe something I should have thought of when I invested in an RC car. And I only have one direction that I can move uh, where the tires will actually grip because of the way the weight's distributed. We're getting closer. This is research and development. Zip ties are the answer. I don't know why I didn't think of it. If I used zip ties and created a, a spring sort of tension mechanism, that just ran like a friction bearing, so this smooth surface of the zip tie can rub pretty easily against the smooth surface of the metal. Plus you have these ridges, so it's not a perfectly flat surface, and there's less surface area on the plastic. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, workspace is getting messy. Mise en place applies to more than just cooking. Of course, for me, it mostly just means get all my sh** off camera. I think the answer is definitely we need more counterbalance on the other side. I need to find some heavy stuff. All right, it would seem that balance has been achieved. There's our roll cage, as well as some extra weight. it up. Woohoo! Wow. If you've stuck it out this far, I have a reward for you. But first, let me just say, thank you for watching. If you like this video, this is just the beginning. I literally end up with about five to 10 new video ideas every time I finish a video. I try and write all the music that's in my videos, like this background track, and I hope you like it. Consider subscribing. I'd love to put more time into the bean racer, putting in a better radio system, making it look completely like a can from the outside, giving it the ability to steer without any external moving parts. 
These would be some awesome goals for a potential sequel video, so let me know if you'd be interested. I'm gonna leave you with some awesome footage that I got by attaching my camera and a flashlight to a skateboard. Enjoy.